Good morning and welcome to 101010 at Poets House, the poetry library in downtown New York City. Poets House is the place for poetry, poets, and all things verse. I'm Dave Johnson, poet and playwright and your host of 101010, where we invite you at 10 a.m. on weekdays for 10 minutes to write a new poem. And in 10 days, you'll have 10 new poems. This morning on 101010 times 2, we're looking at the poems of Olga Brumus. Here at Poets House, we have several books by Olga, and you will see some of her books she actually writes in collaboration, right? Uh, this book here that uh, we're going to read from this morning is with Olga and Jane Miller called Black Holes, Black Stockings. And she also wrote one with T. Begley called Sappho's Gymnasium, right? We have Pastoral Jazz. And then one of her early books, which was actually selected uh, for a prize by Stanley Kunitz early on, the founder, along with Elizabeth Cray, of Poets House. She, uh, she was one of his students, I think, early on as well. And that one is called Beginning with O, right? Olga Brumis. The one we're going to look at this morning uh, comes from Black Holes, Black Stockings that she wrote as a collaborative with Jane Miller is what we call a little vignette, a little happening, a little episode, a little scene, if you will, and it all takes place in one time and place, right? Imagine it almost like a little film. And in this case, it's like a little love poem, right? So this is what we're going to think about this morning is the love vignette this morning. The little moment, the little happening, the little uh, episode, the little scene. And this one takes place on a little island in Greece called Sifnos. Sifnos. Remember how close we sat in Sifnos? having dinner by the water. You said in your country, once you put the table in the water. You began the meal, and then what a great idea to move it over a little. It would cool you. It was that calm. You rolled your pants to the knee and poured drinks all around, the fish bones back to the sea. Lizards climb the stone outside the kitchen by the sea. Weeds and flowers grow out of the stone. The relatives spill out of the kitchen. The daughter is well-educated or about to be. She serves us with the happy face of one who is leaving. You lifted your skirt walking home in the dark over the pebbles to sit. One night we saw the only other lovers. They were both fair, she blonde and he gray, and their eyes moved only to each other and the sea. These two destinations, now the sea, once in a while slips a wave up to their feet because a boat passes, or for no reason. Now the yellow moon divides the sea into fields. Olga Brumis and Jane Miller, right? This little vignette. Let's take a closer look at this poem this morning. She opens by asking, remember. Remember how close we sat in Sifnos having dinner by the water. So right there in that opening question, we know exactly where we are, right? We're on this little island. There's at least two people, right? And they're having dinner by the water. She says, you said in your country, once you put the table in the water. And she italicizes the word in. And so that slight little lilt when she reads it, you said in your country, once you put the table in the water, you began the meal. And then what a great idea to move it over a little. It would cool you. It was that calm. You rolled your pants to the knee and poured drinks all around. The fish bones back to the sea. Lizards climb the stone outside the kitchen by the sea. Weeds and flowers grow out of the stone. The relatives spill out of the kitchen. And you can just see the scene start to take place now as the whole dinner is happening. And then the relatives start to pour out of the little restaurant kitchen, right? The daughter is well-educated or about to be. She serves us with the happy face of one who is leaving. Well, you imagine this young woman who's about to go away. You have that sense that there's excitement in the air, right? That she's going to leave this little island and probably go far away. You lifted your skirt walking home in the dark over the pebbles to sit. One night we saw the only other lovers. They were both fair, she blonde and he gray, and their eyes moved only to each other in the sea. Now these two see two other lovers, right? 
these two destinations as they see, right? The sea and the others. Now the sea once in a while slips a wave up to their feet because a boat passes or for no reason. Now the yellow moon divides the sea into fields, right? And you imagine that yellow moon over the water and this just sort of separation that happens, almost like they're fields of water, right? It's a beautiful little moment. What I'm going to ask you to do today is to start your little love vignette, if you will, with a question. You could start with that idea, remembering a certain moment, and think of the time and place that this little scene takes place, and just allow it to unfold, right? And tell us the little story, the little happening, the little episode, the little scene, right? You think about yours, take about 10 minutes with this, and then share it with us. This morning we're reading Olga Brumas along with Jane Miller. She wrote this one in collaboration, this book called Black Holes, Black Stockings. Each one of these little vignettes, these little episodes, little scenes, have no title. She didn't title them. It's just, just the book itself with the, the title. But they're all little episodic moments, right? Little, little happenings, if you will. And this one starts with the question, right? Remember when we were sitting for dinner in the island of Sifnos, right? So it's a little love vignette. So we're going to create ours this morning. I'm going to give a shot at mine, see what I can come up with. I want you to give a shot at yours too for the next few minutes. All right, I'm going to start with that same question. I want you to think about it. Start with that question and think about the time and place where it is set, right? So here we go. I'm going to say, remember the evening in Roma. At the table just outside the town limit. In the old Jewish quarter. Eating crunchy car trophy Judea. I'm going to misspell this, but we'll come back to it. I think they spell it in, in Italian. It's actually Judea with a G, right? Judea. I'll come back and get that later. Um, and the waiter... rolled in like an opera devo reciting the main menu like Traviata. Oh, what glory in the music of the table. Happiness. Never tasted so sweet. All right, there we go. All right, let's see what happens here. Remember the evening in Roma at the table just outside the town limit in the old Jewish quarter eating crunchy carchofi Judea and the waiter rolling in like an opera divo reciting the main menu like Traviata. Oh, what glory in the music of the table. Happiness never tasted so sweet. That's mine this morning, right? Just a little vignette, a little moment at a table in Roma. A very sweet little moment. 
I want you to take about 10 minutes and write your vignette, your little love vignette, if you will, this morning, and share it with us at the address on the screen. I want to share another poem with you by Olga Brumus. This one is from her book, Beginning with O, which was uh, chosen by Stanley Kunitz as the Yale Younger Poets Prize um, back uh, when she was a student. So this, this book is, uh, is back uh, from the mid-90s, I believe. Yeah, no, excuse me, back in, uh, actually, 1977. Yeah, 1977. I first... Uh, encountered Olga's work when she came to read at my undergraduate college and she just completely blew us all away. She, she was sitting on a little stool, I remember, uh, in a little, sort of a little conference room and she started reading and she just closed the book and it was like she floated off and she, the words were just so much a part of her. It was, uh, I think, the first time I'd ever seen a poet where the poem was totally in her and she just let it release and so it was almost as if she wasn't reading from the book at all and then when i came to poet's house i found her work again on a little cassette tape we have a wonderful collection of uh audio files here at poet's house too and i was working in poet's house it was on an early saturday morning and no one else was in the space and i'll never forget reading that little poem uh the little vignette that we shared and the way she said, put the table in the water, I, I couldn't stop getting enough of that poem. It was just absolutely miraculous. So I've always enjoyed hearing her read and also reading her work. And I want to share this one with you as well. This one also set in Greece and then moves into Oregon where she lived later. It's called Sometimes as a Child. When the Greek sea was exceptionally calm, the sun not so much a pinnacle as a perspiration of light, your brow and the sky meeting on the horizon, sometimes you would dive from the float, the pier, the stone promontory, through water so startled it held the shape of your plunge. And there in the arrested heat of the afternoon, without thought, effortless, as a mantra turning you turn in the paused wake of your dive, enter the suck of the parted waters. You'd emerge clean, cesarean, flinging, live rivulets from your hair, your own breath arrested, something immaculate, a chance, crucial junction, time, light, water had occurred. You could feel your bones glisten, translucent as spinal fins. In rain green Oregon now, approaching 30, sometimes the same rare concert of light and spine resonates in my bones as glistening starfish lover your fingers beach up. Olga Brumus, sometimes as a child, beginning with O. Join us next time here at 101010 10, 10 times 2. If you've enjoyed these programs, please consider giving a contribution to Poets House. For more than 30 years, they've kept the door wide open to everyone for the joy of poetry. Recently, they have temporarily had to shut the door and are reeling from the financial implications. Please give even a small donation if you can. Thank you.